In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to emboss uh, something with a bit more higher resolution onto something uh, as small as a dental model. Um, generally speaking, uh, the resolution of dental models are, are good enough to put simple things like text and maybe even simple logos and things like that. Um, but in general, it's probably not going to work um, as you had intended. Um, so I'm going to show you some ways around that and, and how to uh, get your uh, dental model uh, to the proper density uh, to allow for um, really nice looking embossing. Um, so we'll just kind of do a demonstration of what it looks like before I do anything here, just with a logo. Um, same tools before, um, it's going to be Sculpt. I'm going to make sure it's on the surface brush. I already have a stencil preloaded, all the same uh, settings as before. Uh, the brush is on draw max, pull off is that constant, square one. Um, strength and size, we can uh, kind of dial in in, uh, in just a second. Spacing, to keep it at 100, laziness down to zero. Um, the refinement is the exact same as well. Uh, you want to enable it, 100 on refine, down to zero on reduce, and 100 on both smooth and adaptivity. No filters uh, were used. So I come up here, and just a simple left click will kind of show you what it looks like without any alteration of the model. And there's my logo, my little test logo. You can't see it. Um, don't really know what it is, can barely make it out. Do it on the molar here, and you can see it's even worse. Um, so I'm going to kind of explain why that is. I'm going to undo both of these. And um, the, the way to understand all of the stencil tools is really it's based on um, resolution of the image and also um, the mesh density. Those two things have to be about the same. And for logos and things like that, we're probably going to be dealing with high resolution uh, images. Um, so we need to make sure that our uh, mesh surface matches that resolution in order to get a nice, uh, clean looking uh, embossed logo or image or whatever the case is. Um, so I'm going to hit W. And as you can see um, on this top part, it's a, just a bit more um, dense than down here on the, on the molar. And that kind of explains why this down here didn't look as clean as the one up there. They both weren't acceptable as far as um, seeing what the logo looks like and everything like that. Um, but this top one kind of just shows you that it was a bit better, and, and that's why. So what we need to do is increase the mesh density in, in these certain areas and uh, in only those certain areas. You don't need to do it to the whole model because that would be way too many triangles, and it would just be... Um, too computationally intensive on your computer, probably, and uh, it'd be very difficult to, to work in the program. Um, so I'm going to hit W again so we can just kind of see it as this is. Uh, the first way to do this, I'm going to show you a few different ways. The first one is just to hit S, hit the Select tool. Um, I'm going to just bring this brush size down a little bit and just kind of select the area where I'm going to do the embossing. And it's going to be probably right here is where I want it. And... Uh, once it's selected, I'm just going to hit the R button for remesh. Um, so that's going to uh, take some time. If you have a slower computer, it's probably going to take a little bit longer than if you have a faster computer. Um, what I've found here is that the best way to do this is to bring the mode down to target edge length. Because um, that's what specifically uh, we're looking for. We don't want it a percentage based on the existing mesh or anything like that. I specifically want the edges of the triangles to be at 0 0.06 millimeters. I found that that has been kind of the bare minimum um, for getting a good, uh, good looking logo or good looking, you know, really nice looking text. Um, if you go further than that, you're going to get better and better. Um, but this is kind of like the bare minimum um, for, for most logos, I would say 0 0.06. And if you go 0 0.04, 0 0.02, it just gets better and better, more and more clear. Um, I've also found that uh, bumping up the regularity to 100 uh, really helps things out, just makes the triangles more evenly spaced. Um, all this other stuff is default. It's 50, um, 10 on the iterations, um, 0 for the transition. All this is default. Smooth boundaries is fine. Um, sharp edge threshold, uh, just leave it like that. And all this is good. I'm going to hit accept. Okay, so you look at this and you go, oh, well, what happened? Uh, it doesn't look like anything happened, but we hit W. And then you can really see what's actually gone on here. I'm going to clear the selection, too, just so you can really see it. Um, you can basically see three different areas of mesh density now. Um, and if you hit W, 
nothing has changed on the surface topology. It is only uh, the amount of triangles. And if there is any surface top, uh, topology change, it's certainly negligible. Um, I'm going to hit W so I can see the wireframe again. And uh, we've remeshed this area up here to what I have kind of found to be the a good um, density for logos. Um, that looks much denser than the smaller was. And it looks much, uh, not much, much denser, but more dense than uh, what we had originally. So now that I can kind of visualize that, I'm going to hit W, back to the normal, and go back to my stencil. I'm going to hit the number three button. That's a hot key to get into the surface mode. And I got my stencil all ready. And let's see here. I'm just going to bump up the uh, size just a little bit and kind of just see what this looks like. Single left click. Let's put it right back here. And there you go. You can see it's, uh, you know, getting pretty good, you know. And if you had a, a smaller logo or, or something without this text here, or if it was just this face, um, I bet uh, it would look a little bit better. Um, and I think you might notice, too, I've, I've dropped the, uh, the strength down a little bit, um, actually quite a bit. For text, it was up at 50, I believe. And, and for, for these high resolution things, you don't need it up that high. Um, it'll just uh, project uh, project your logo uh, way too far, and it just kind of creates distortions and, and a little bit of noise. So you just want to dial that down a little bit. Um, so this is the 0.06. That's kind of what I've deemed as kind of the bare minimum here. And if you look at that, I mean, our logo is still the size of a cusp, and it's uh, it's recognizable. So um, that resolution is just fine. And if I hit Control-Z and undo that, just make this a little bit bigger. And let's just say it was just the guy I was interested in. You know, kind of do that. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks, that's that's okay. That's acceptable, I would say, bare minimum. Um, so that's one way uh, to get the uh, the mesh density up in a, in a particular region. Uh, another uh, way that we're all going to be doing is, I'm going to bring my brush size down a little bit. I'm going to hit S for select. Oh, I brought it down a little too far here. Oh, there it is. Uh, a little bit more, actually, and I'm going to uh, actually increase the uh, crease angle threshold pretty high here. Bring this back up just a little bit and just click on the center. And so this is only selecting just the flat part. It stops at that angle and that I've set, threshold, and that looks good. That's just uh, selecting just that top part, and that, that little tip here is so useful for, for so many things. Um, but just make sure you bring it back down when you're done using it. Um, so we have that selected, and all of us are going to be extruding our models um, when we're creating our, our models anyway. So when you do that, let's just pretend we're extruding. I hit D. Um, in a typical scenario, we'd have the whole model selected, and we're hitting D. Um, so you can bring that up. And uh, we want flat. Okay, so this is what we normally be doing, but this time what we could do is kind of bump up the density here. And I'm gonna just really bump it up, 100 all the way. And I'm gonna go accept. Okay, um, so again, kind of looks like nothing even happened. You hit W though, and okay. That is much more dense um, than all of these areas. So we should be getting better and better as far as resolution of this uh, logo goes. So I'm going to uh, hit W, get back to just kind of normal viewing. I'm going to hit 3 to get into my uh, surface stencil here. And just so we can kind of check all of them, let's start with the molar. And do a little guy there. Looks horrible. Um, can I go back to where we didn't do any? Well, where was that? Oh, like right here. Uh, still horrible. That's, again, that slightly improved mesh density. And then this is the one that we uh, hit R on and remeshed. Let's see what that looks like. And that's the best so far, about barely what you would need. Then we come up to this one that we remeshed and left click. Actually, that doesn't look much better, to be totally honest with you. I'm going to hit W and just kind of view and I'm not too sure why it might have something to do with the way it extruded um, maybe that's not the most viable way to do this but it certainly did increase the mesh density and maybe if I just bump this up a little bit just kind of see yeah 
I mean, a little bit bigger, and it, and it does look pretty good as far as the resolution goes there. Um, but I think the, the best way to do this is the third way. So I'm going to come over here, kind of get on one of these front teeth here. Now, I've already done it on this tooth and this tooth, so I'm just going to left-click on it. And I'll show you what it looks like. And there you go. That is probably, you know, the best resolution you're going to get for any type of logo. Um, I mean, that's literally, you know, the Seisman Incisor. It's perfect resolution there. Um, looks nice. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Single click. And there you go. So uh, you can only imagine what that mesh density looks like underneath there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit and just hit W so you can see. Yep, it's just virtually dark. There's so many triangles in there that even zoomed out just a little bit, you can barely even tell where they are. Um, how I did that, uh, instead of selecting and remeshing, there's actually a very clever way of doing this a different way. I'm going to come to this tooth here. Oh, now everything's just going real slow because we got a lot of triangles going on again. Um, I'm going to hit the number two button. That brings me to the volume sculpt tool. The brush that I'm going to be using is the refine, fall off, needs to be this constant again. Strength should be up all the way. 100. Size, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a sec. Depth, zero. Laziness, zero. You want to uncheck volumetric. We do not want to change uh, really anything there as far as the surface topology goes. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that having that checked would do that. So we're going to uncheck that. Um, I'm coming back to the uh, refinement here, making sure everything's the same, uh, up to 100, zero. Um, oh, you know, the smooth is down all the way. Let's, oh, okay, so this is for the uh, refinement, not the uh, stencil, so that's why. Um, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, you just want the refinement all the way up. Uh, reduce down, smooth down, totally fine. So I come over here, um, and what you need to do is, the way this uh, brush works is the size of the brush dictates um, what you're going to be remeshing here. So if I left click now, I got a smaller brush. You can kind of see it's um, just uh, remeshing as I click. Um, and I find this to be just a little bit easier and uh, computationally less intensive than um, some of the remesh uh, operations and things like that. Um, so, I mean, that worked pretty well, but as you can see, it's nothing like this over here. So, what I really need to do is get this really, really small. And you got to make sure the strength is up all the way. Um, but I have this down really small, and it basically is just setting the target edge length based on how small your brush is. So now come over here, left clicking, and just kind of doing a little paint job. Um, wherever I need my logo, that's all you have to do is just on that one spot. You, I mean, like I said, uh, the whole model doesn't have to be this way, just on the spot where you need uh, to put your, your logo or whatever uh, higher resolution text or, or images. Um, so there you go. We've done that. I'm going to hit W, and as you can see, nothing's changed as far as the surface topology goes. Um, and I'm going to get my stencil out again, hit the number three. And I have my stencil. I'm going to increase my size a little bit. I'm using the bracket buttons here, the square bracket buttons, make it bigger and smaller. Uh, once I get it to where I need it, I'm going to single left click, and there you go. High resolution uh, logo or image or text or anything that you'd like to put on a, on a smaller model like this. Um, it's all based on uh, the mesh density that's going on in the background. So um, hopefully that helps a little bit. And um, I'd like to see some really cool things uh, come because of this. Uh, now that we can uh, emboss models and uh, put text uh, and information on it. I think we can uh, start developing some really nice workflows. So, okay, uh, thank you very much and uh, take care.